What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to cover how to swap in custom React components in Payload CMS, Collections, and Globals. Before we get started though, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss when I release a video about Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you'd like to see the code that I use in this video, there's a link to the repo in the description. Now, let's dive in. There are four types of custom components, root, collection, global, and field custom components. This video builds on the concepts from the previous video on root custom components. If you haven't watched that video yet, please pause this one and go back and watch that video. Not only does it highlight how to replace components in your dashboard, it also goes over what custom components are and how they work in detail. If there's a concept that I mention in this video that you're not familiar with, chances are high it's in the previous video. We'll tackle field components in the next video, so this video will focus on two of the four custom component types collection and global components. Collections can set their own custom components to apply UI changes only to elements specific to UI elements in your collections. There are two available areas for you to change using custom components, each with their own sets of options and properties, list and edit view. The list view is the page you see when you first click into your collection. This view lists all of your available documents that you've created in Payload CMS and are stored in your database. The components you create for this view will change elements only in the collection you're adding the components into. This means if you want to use the same description component across collections, you'll need to import it into each collection. To get started, we'll go to our posts collection folder and add a new directory called components. This is where we'll store all our custom components. There are several options you can choose from, so we'll go through each in turn. The first two options are the before list and after list options. We'll start by creating a before list.tsx and an after list.tsx. In the before list file, we'll export a new const called before list content. We'll then return a div that has a paragraph tag that has the text, this is a collection of blog posts. We'll then go to our afterlist.tsx file and export a new const called afterlist content. We'll return a new div that has a paragraph tag with the content, this content shows up after the list. We'll then go to our post collection config file and import these into our admin prop. So up here at the top of our file, we can add components to our admins prop and then we'll add before list and after list. These both take arrays of objects, which we can just pass in the path property and find our components path. Now, if any of this is unfamiliar, be sure to watch the video on custom root components before moving on. And so our paths should be source collections, posts, components, and then we have before list.tsx, and we'll use before list content. And then in the after list component, we can change before list to after list. And the same thing here. Now, when we save this, we need to check and see if our import map runs. And it does not look like it does. So we'll do payload generate import map in pnpm dev. And after this loads up, we can see our after list content showing up here at the bottom of the table and our before list content showing up here above the title blog posts. To make this a little more useful, why don't we link back to our post index page in the before list component. We'll go back to our before list.tsx and we'll wrap our paragraph tag in a span. And at the end of our paragraph tag, we'll add a link and import it from next link with an href set to be our posts route with a target of blank and view posts as the content of the link. Now, if we click on this link, we'll get a 404 because we don't have this posts route. So let's create it real quick. So up in our app front end, we'll go to posts and we're just going to add a new file called page.tsx. We're gonna export our default function posts and we're just going to return div 
that says posts. So we'll save this, and once our page refreshes, we'll click on view posts. Once this loads, we can see that post shows up on our posts route. This change will allow us or our editors to quickly go to the front end representation of the collection this list is referencing. Next up, we have before list table and after list table, which both take an array of components. I want to do something different and create a component called posts by status. First, let's create a file called postsbystatus.tsx. So we'll add that to our collection components. So we'll add a new TypeScript file, postsbystatus.tsx. Now in our postsbystatus.tsx file, we'll import payload. From payload, we'll export a const called posts by status, which is going to take an async argument of payload with the payload object having the type of payload, and we'll open up an arrow function. We'll close this and create a new const called drafts and set that to equal await payload.count and check in the collection posts where our status equals drafts. Then down here, we'll do the then method and process our response to return our total docs from the drafts in our collection posts. Now we'll copy all of that and paste it down here and create a const called published with the status of published. Now let's return a message at the top of our table that says there are or is blank number of post or posts in draft and blank number of post or post publish. We can do that by returning a paragraph tag and saying there, and then checking the number of drafts. So we're gonna say if it's not equal to one, because if it's not, it's multiple or zero, which we would use are, but if it is equal to one, it's singular and we'd use is. And then we'll return the number of drafts that are in our drafts const total doc count. And then we'll also put post here and then check again the number of drafts because if it does not equal one, then we need to write an extra S, but if it is equal to one, we can just leave it blank. So that's it for drafts there. And now we can add and published to return the number of published documents and then see if our published document is not equal to one. Again, that means it is multiple and we'll return S to make this say posts but if not, we can leave an empty string there to just have it be the singular version of post. And then we can finish this off by writing published. Now, when we save this and go to our config, we can go to our components property and add before list table, open up an array, then open up an object that has path of source, collections, posts, components, posts by status.tsx, and then post by status. Now we can save this and run payload generate import map and then restart our server, refresh our table. So we can see that this says there are zero posts and that should say in draft. So we'll go back to our post by status.tsx and add in draft there, save, and we should see that pop up. But either way we can see and one post published. Now, if we go to blog one test and click unpublish, we can confirm that and go back to our blog posts. And here it says there are zero posts in draft, but that's because our status is set to equal drafts instead of draft. So if I save that, this will now update to say there is one post in draft and zero posts published. And this is helpful information to see at a glance if there are any posts in draft that may need my attention. We could link draft and published to filter the blogs by status by taking the link generated by adding a filter status equals draft or published and using a link in the component to the text like so. So if you go to filters, add filter, then we can go to our status equals draft and then we're going to take this link there and do the same thing for published, which is gonna return nothing, but we can see that that is different. And then we're just going to return a version with those filters included. So now I can import link from next link and save. And we can see now that we can click on draft and see our filters update or published to see nothing be returned. The next option you have available is the description prop. 
This one is easy as it's just a replacement to the text only admin.description with a lowercase d option. Let's copy our current placeholder description and paste it into its own component by creating a description.tsx. So we'll go to our config and copy our description and then we'll create a new component called description.tsx and then we're going to export a const called description and open up an arrow function and return a paragraph tag and paste in our this is a blog collection description. To make sure we use something to distinguish between our old and new description, I'm going to copy the power button SVG from last video here. So now I'll just paste it in and we can see that we have more of a component now here. Back in our components prop in the post config, we can include the description with an uppercase D in our components prop. This does not take an array, so we only need to pass in one object with path to be source collections, posts, components, description, dot tsx, description. So now if I save this, we'll see this is a blog collection B updated with a power icon next to it. The lowercase d description is still important as it's used for JS docs, which can help you understand what a payload type is at a glance. Leaving the admin.description is a good idea so you can always refer back to that description if you need it. The uppercase description in components will override your lowercase d description, so you don't need to worry about duplicating content. Since admin description can only take text, if you want to extend the functionality of the description area, you'll need to use admin.components.description in order to get that done. Keep in mind that whatever you use here will also be included on the edit screen. So if I click into blog one test, we can see this is a blog collection persists onto this screen. In addition to the custom components you can add in the list view, you can also change the behavior of two other helpful options, pagination and list searchable fields. Pagination is one customization you can do to your list view where you can set your default pagination to be whatever you want it to be. You have the default limit and limits option available to you. Limits takes an array of numbers that takes the place of the dropdown selector in the list view. By default, your limits option comes with 5, 10, 25, 50, and 100, which we can see here. If you want to use a different number for the default limit, you will need to add that number to your limits array in order to use that default limit. You can add zero to your limits to show all your documents. So I'll use zero, 10, 20, and 50. So we add this to the admin where we'll add pagination and then limits of zero, 10, 20, and 50 with our default limit being zero. And these all take numbers. Be mindful of your user preferences when you're experimenting with how many documents you want to return. If you find that your values aren't updating correctly as you edit, you may need to go to your user profile and clear your preferences by clicking on the icon in the top right, scrolling down to the bottom, and clicking reset preferences, and then confirm. List searchable fields is another change to behavior you can make in your list view to change what fields you can search on in your collection. Simply add the list searchable fields array to your admin prop, and then we can use something like slug and title. If you're using admin use as title, this field is searchable by default, but adding any other list searchable field will overwrite this option. Be sure to add that slug back into the array if you still want to search on it, just like I did with title here. So I'll also add our authors field to show that we're able to search on relationship fields as well. As far as I can tell, you can't use fields that are in named tabs, groups, arrays, or anything else that takes a field out of the top level. It also seems that you can't use rich text fields, but you can use relationship fields like authors, like I did. There is one last option under admin components that we can use, edit. This is a prop you'll use to override certain elements in the edit view of your collection. The edit view is the page you see when you click into an individual document to edit it. The components you create for this view will change the same element across all documents. You have the ability to change the save button, save draft button, publish button, preview button, and the upload field. But whatever change you make here also changes the functionality of the current components provided by the payload CMS team. I would recommend not making many changes here unless you know what you're doing and understand how to perform your own custom business logic here. Globals can set their own custom components to apply UI changes only to the elements specific to UI elements in your globals. 
the number of options you have with globals is quite limited. In general, you can override or create new views for your globals, and you can override or create new elements in your edit view. You can access the Save button, Save Draft button, Publish button, and Preview button components using Components Elements. But I'll give the same warning here as I did in the Edit view of Collections. Unless you really know what you're doing, I would avoid replacing these components. There's a lot you can do with these custom components. I gave a few silly examples and a couple of useful ones, but experimenting and understanding how to use the custom component is going to be where you'll find the most value. In the next video, we'll cover Field Custom Components, which allow you to make changes to how those views are presented. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others who might find it useful as well. Check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you never miss when I release a video about Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you have questions or suggestions, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.